E3 2016 hit hard, and today GameRanks is bringing you the 10 best new games of E3 2016. Quick disclaimer, Battlefield 1, Gears of War 4, Dishonored 2, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Forza Horizon 3, Detroit, and Watch Dogs 2 will not be included on this list. They were announced prior to E3. This is specifically stuff that we didn't know about. Number 10, State of Decay 2, the open world post-apocalyptic survival RPG is back and co-founder of Undead Labs, Jeff Strain, said it's going to be bigger, badder, bolder, and smoother. Smoother probably being the adjective I'm most excited about there. What's particularly exciting about this one is that it supports drop-in co-op play, which is something that I think is really a great idea for State of Decay. Now that doesn't mean it's not going to be a great single-player experience, and it really looks like a big upgrade to the original game, which Jeff Strain adds that dynamic game systems for character progression based base building, leadership promotion, and consequence driven storytelling are going to result in a dramatic experience that tests your will to survive. I'm ready. Number 9, Days Gone. Days Gone is an open world action adventure game that distinguishes itself pretty well from the other devastating global zombie pandemic games, firstly by setting itself in the wilderness, which is frankly probably where you would end up if society shut down, and also by having the character focus on a much more emotional center. But on top of that, like I don't know if you saw the gameplay for this game, but I don't think I've ever seen a game where they treat hordes of zombies literally like a wave. It's overwhelming in the absolute best way, and I can't wait to play this. Number eight, Steep is an open world alpine sports game, which if that sounds ridiculous or silly or weird, I understand. But after you watch some gameplay of it, you get it. It combines the best parts of a lot of the best games out there, snowboarding, skiing games, wingsuiting, paragliding, with an open world exploration element and a lot of interesting ideas like the ability to challenge friends to tough jumps that you found and executed. The game looks to really fill a void left by a total lack of extreme sports games and then some. I think a lot of people who aren't even into that type of game are going to be very interested in this because it looks to explore the concept on such a different level than ever before, but still maintain a really great take on the various styles of gameplay. Number 7, Dead Rising 4, seems to make some good steps back to the more ridiculous original Dead Rising, as well as also building on all the foundations to make it much bigger. The game returns to Willamette, Colorado, and will be spending about 65% of the time in the mall, 35% outside the mall. But the mall is bigger, has larger themed areas, and a sewer sub-level, as well as simply being a mall, which a lot of people really wanted Dead Rising to just do. It takes place at Christmas, so essentially it's the diehard of zombie games. It's got new mechanics such as an exoskeleton that kind of works like power armor, and the whole thing looks like a massive return to form for Dead Rising. Number 6, Spider-Man. Existing in its own universe, not in any pre-existing Spider-Man universe, including the Marvel Cinematic one which Sony and Marvel are now collaborating on, Insomniac Games, the developers of Ratchet and Clank, and more importantly to this title, Sunset Overdrive, which if you can't see why that would prime somebody to make a Spider-Man game, I don't I don't know what to say to you. There hasn't been a Spider-Man game in a long time, but in 2004, Spider-Man 2 pretty much lays a great baseline for what to build on for this game, and it looks like they're doing just that. The fact that it looks so much like that Spider-Man game makes me really excited too, because that game was so fun. Just to say it flat out, I'm really excited just to have a new Spider-Man game. Number five, Prey, which is not Prey 2, which would have been the sequel to the 2006 version of Prey. This is a reimagining, and it really looks good. They took a really interesting approach on the trailer, giving us kind of a Groundhog Day feel, while also showing a problem slowly building. The original game was about being abducted by aliens and attempting to escape, all while the ship that you were abducted on gradually absorbs the world around it. It seems like that very well could be the plot, and the Groundhog Day situation could be kind of appeasement for the mind of the protagonist while they're being absorbed. What we do know is that it looks extremely extremely original despite being a reboot and that's always good. Number four, Quake Champions is kind of the overwatch of Bethesda's lineup. As I noted on my Twitter at Falcon the Hero during the conference, I called it Quake for Watch, but it actually looks really great. Tim Willits of its software described it as slightly eSport in design with the different classes that they've integrated and that they're working on a series of Quake leagues and events. What's great about that is that Willits 
is the co-designer of the original Quake, so you know that this is going to be handled reverently and properly. Number three, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which it looks like Capcom kind of figured something out. First, that Resident Evil has become extremely overblown. Second, that Silent Hills slash PT being canceled. And then now even Allison Road, the spiritual continuation of that idea being canceled. There is a void. Capcom didn't even bother mincing words either because they released a demo that will not appear in the full game, much like P.T. Silent Hill's original teaser, and it plays so much like that it's almost scary. But while the similarities are almost scary, the demo is scary. Frankly, I haven't been more interested in Resident Evil since the time between Resident Evil 1 and 2. In other words, get hyped if they don't mess it up. This is gonna be it! Number two, speaking of Silent Hills, Death Stranding, a Hideo Kojima game, asked more questions than it answered about the first game from Kojima Productions as an independent studio. We have no idea what kind of game it is, though I would guess that it's probably a first-person immersive game, because Hideo Kojima kind of stoked that fire with PT. And it's going to star Norman Reedus. What we've seen is a lot of dead sea life, Norman Reedus naked and handcuffed, with an umbilical cord going to a baby that disappears, and that he has dog tags on, with equations on them, referencing in quantum mechanics. So what people have gathered from this is that it's going to be a sci-fi game that has something to do with the environment on account of all the oil and dead sea life. I would say given that Kojima tends to care a lot about issues in the world when he's creating his bizarre shit, shit that we all love, I'm flabbergasted by this, but I'm like ready for more. Give me more. This is very bizarre and mysterious, and that's exactly kind of what I wanted from Hideo Kojima. I hope everybody else is intrigued as I am. And finally, number one, God of War, which just turned God of War on its head. It's not a reboot. It is a continuation of the story. The big difference, obviously, Kratos is a dad now. He's got a beard indicating some age, and he's kind of cold, but he's also a little bit more patient. His son shot him with an arrow, and he didn't, like, flip out or anything. He just kind of moved on, which, I mean, good on you, man. His son is apparently going to stay with him for the vast majority of the game, and a lot of it is going to be about him kind of regaining his humanity. Humanity. What's interesting is that it appears to be a similar style of play, but it's setting up something much bigger. They're saying there's a massive plan behind it and that it extends beyond this game, so I mean if it follows this much more layered approach, I'm excited because I love the God of War gameplay, but I like that moving forward we're going to try to go a bit deeper. With age comes experience and this series has got some age on it, so let's bring the experience. What was your favorite game that was announced at E3 2016? Let's go to the comments for that and have a nice long discussion. I know you're probably equally hyped as I am, so if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed to Game Ranks, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.